Hi guys, Coach Steven here. I just finished my workout. As you can see, fossil tone is looking pretty good. Blood pump, plus contraction. Yeah, and I just want to do have a quick personal note. Now I straight off my workout. Sorry, this just feels amazing. I'm gonna keep doing this. Um, yeah. So the point that I was gonna be making is, I just wanted to share that I'm so thankful for having my passion in martial arts rekindled and there's been a few people in my life that have helped with that process um i don't want to start naming names and forget intricate like you know <laughs> crucial intricate um integral people so i'll just leave it at thank you for the individuals in my life that you know have been inspiring me and putting good energy into my life and just give you know putting out good vibes and these are people one know personally people on the internet People that don't even know me because I follow them on YouTube. <laughs> There's great coaches out there. So, so thank you. Thank you to everyone that's making things better. So, I just want to express my gratitude to the people around me, to the good vibes, and to martial arts for helping me get my health back, helping me get my mind right again. Because <sighs> I can feel martial arts is... It's my... It's my safe harbor. It's my... The foundation upon which I threw a review reality. It's, it's like the lens through which I view what's important. It's the moral compass to a large degree. It's the philosophy. It's the grounding in yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. You know, helping you prioritize what's important, helping you connect with yourself. And connecting with yourself is a, a big thing, I think, for a lot of people. And I know for myself that. Being able to center myself, my being, just to create a, a balance of centering yourself, finding your balance in life, mentally, emotionally, physically, how you interact with people, just getting your nervous system to be in the right place, your brain waves to be in the right place, your mind to be on the right things. Martial arts helps me with all of that stuff. So I'm, I'm telling you this because, one, I'm thankful for all of that, but two, because if you don't do martial arts, if you've never done martial arts, there is, if I could recommend only one thing to an individual to improve their life mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, the general state of their being. If I could only recommend one thing to help with that, martial arts. There's a million other things that I would recommend, but first thing that comes to mind, martial arts. In martial arts, I have found inspiring mentors, I have found discipline, I have found respect, found respect for virtue, you know, <laughs> yeah, just putting your mind on compassion, justice, fairness, the, the, the virtues and morals that are encapsulated in true martial arts. Now, martial arts, it's a big blanket term. And there's many different aspects and facets to martial arts. There's philosophy, there's physical training, there's martial component, you know, fighting for combat and the likely death of your opponent. There are very extreme aspects within martial arts and the way you engage with them and the, the energy you put in and what you get out is different in all these different facets. It's not like I do martial arts, I get the same benefit as you. No. Everyone that does martial arts gets different benefits. They are, there'll be, a, there'll be a lot of overlap, but who you are, who the instructor is, these are variables that are different across the world. Uh, you know, spiritually who you are, how open-minded you are to what you're being told, how you perceive that information. Everything is different for everyone. What you focus on. Are you focusing on the philosophical elements? Are you focusing on the health fo uh, elements? Is it psychological? Is it spiritual? Is it physical? Is it all of those things and what different ratios is it in those things? All of these things are different for different people. It's a very subjective experience. But there are many, many wonderful components and facets within it that you can explore that will benefit you. That's what I'm also trying to communicate. There's abundant benefit. It is in any movement practice, in anything you pour your heart and soul into, you're going to get something amazing out. If you're putting your heart and soul into something good, don't do... Bad shit, bad shit breeds bad shit. Um, but yeah, if you're putting your, if you're an artist, a dancer, a martial artist, 
eraser, <laughs> whatever it is, whatever turns your crank, floats your boat. If you put yourself into that and you engage with it and you put your mind to it and you're constantly learning because you're interested and you're passionate and it, it feeds your soul and it feeds your mind because your mind is then engaged on reality to learn more about this thing. It makes you more of a person grows you as a person if you're passionate about something because you want to serve that thing better you want to be better at it you want to know more about it 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 pulls you into being more of a person so where you put that focus obviously you don't control your interests entirely but pursue your interests and try kindle new interests because there'll be things out there that you're interested in you just don't know it because you haven't come across them <laughs> so there, there are things out in the world that they're un, un unfound gems of value that you don't know exist and the second you see it it'll spark maybe you've never seen ballet and you're 20 years old and you start to see someone do ballet and you're like wow that is beautiful that is majestic i want to do that you know the second before you saw it you your mind was in a different place to the second you saw it like now now you've been exposed to something new not just something new something that catch, catches your eye calls to you anyway so there's a lot of callings in life and you, you can't pursue all of them but there are callings that they don't just call you they they tether to your soul you want to pursue those things in life because giving up on those kills a little piece of you <laughs> you don't even need to fail if you if, you don't even need to fail in the pursuit failing at trying is even worse than failing in the pursuit because if it's truly meaningful to you and you fail trying to achieve it it's still glorious this is glorious one there's glory and failure in the pursuit of great things i'm paraphrasing i don't think that's exactly it but that encapsulates the meaning if you're pursuing something that's truly meaningful and you fail it was still time well spent because you could have failed doing just about anything else and there's many things you could could have succeeded at that are less meaningful because just they're inherently less valuable they they have less meaning and pursuing them and putting your life and your energy into that thing, it's not noble in, to try to find a word that you're cheating yourself in essence. You're cheating yourself, but you're also cheating those around you. You're cheating your family, you're cheating your friends, you're cheating your community because you're being less than you could be. And if you let the light shine out from within you, if you serve the things that are truly meaningful to you, you would be so much more valuable. You would be valued by others and yourself because you are more ma more valuable. Your your value isn't just yeah. You know, in, in Western culture, everyone's like yeah, the, the individual has a certain inherent value. That's like a, a an idea that's propagated amongst the population. Beautiful idea, very profound and deep. But also, people sometimes focus so much on that. That's it's like it's just my right to be valued to, to a degree. <laughs> to a degree you have you have a right to be valued as a human being to a degree absolutely and that's baseline for everyone but what you do as a human being changes your value if you are a doctor and you cure cancer and save children and to do all sorts of amazing things with your life your value is inherently different to a crack addict that you know mugs people at gunpoint for drugs to 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 themselves to society to the, to reality and human civilization as a whole, there is a net value difference there. And you cannot tell me that, oh, everyone's 100% equal. No. Everyone is 100% human. And as human beings, your fundamental rights, absolutely. Uh, considerations, you know, we all have different journeys and those journeys, you know, mess some people up and some people have it easy, some people have it hard. So, yeah, we, we're kind of understanding to one another. You know, life's tough. <laughs> but if you're someone that actively tries to make the reality better, you are more valuable to me, to them, to your friends, to your family, to the community as a whole. Okay, so I don't want to jump too much now into perspective comes into play because sometimes if you're for this group, you can be against that group. But that starts becoming group politics and it's another level of being because, you know, we, we don't live in isolated groups anymore. We live in large communities within larger communities within national communities within global communities across cultures across beliefs and it's complicated <laughs> it really is 
people have fundamentally different ideas about what's important. Everyone, like these, this culture prioritizes these things as the most important things. This culture prioritizes these things as the most important things. Those cultures meet, there's a disconnect. And these people do things that are unacceptable to these people. And they get really, really angry. And then these people do things that are unacceptable to these people. And these people get really, really angry. And it's just because they believe different things. And it's tricky to, to try run these complex societies. And the, like the governments are kind of squashing our individual belief systems. I think in, a, in essence to remove the differences. The more you remove ideological differences between people, the more you amalgamate them into like one cohesive glob. And there are, there's value in that in the sense that societies generally get more peaceful because there's less things to fight extremely over. But they also lose much of their soul, of their culture, of their heritage, of their history, of what they're connected to, of their narrative. Because you, you start robbing people of their story. And there's pros and cons to that. But it's also, if you lose track of where you've been and who your ancestors are and what, history, what happened in history is important. If you don't consider... People don't want to know about slavery and all those things and all the bad things that happened in history. No, that's unacceptable. We don't want to know about that stuff now. Uh, that just means you're going to make the same fucking mistakes in a matter of time. Or, you know, you're going to be blind to important things. You know, you, yeah, don't focus on it in the sense of giving it energy so it comes again. But don't be blind to it that you let the atrocities that occurred in all these different ways and these different creeping ideologies be aware of it. <laughs> so it... Don't give it energy, but be aware of it so it doesn't sneak up on you and take you out. Okay, so I'm having all kinds of rants here. You're following along for my train of thought. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. If you're not, <laughs> you got the button to click off the video, man. What you're watching for. Um, okay, I, I think this is a good, good time to end off. Um, yeah, much love, everyone. I, I gave you a little bit of talk about just the gratitude that I'm having. Uh, why I think martial arts is important. A little bit of our culture and society, what we've got thrown in there as well, you know. Why not? Um, anyway, go well, ship me messages. Train, live life, make things better. Cheers.